um, our last um, speaker of this session before we um, ask all our speakers uh, questions is um, Oren Eldar. Oren uh, is an architect, scholar, and lecturer based in Tel Aviv. He is the curator of Cloud to Ground, the Israeli pavilion for the upcoming 18th Venice uh, Biennale of Architecture. He holds a B.Arc degree from Bezalel and is currently completing his master's thesis as an Israeli, an Israeli fellow at Tel Aviv uh, University. And uh, in uh, connection to um, to what Ita earlier said regarding um, Gad uh, Asher. We have a nice continuation here, and Oren will speak about Mendelssohn's influence on the Israeli everyday realm, Gad Asher, and the Public Works Department. Oren, please. Um, thank you. It, it's a great... Huh? Ah, yes. Uh, it's a great honor to speak in front of you. I've, I've read many of your um, papers, and... And at the end of all these talks that were magnificent, um, I should maybe appropriate to talk about heritage. I shall begin my talk with death. Uh, on March 1995, Gadasher, the chief architect of the Public Works Department, the PWD, now under the Hebrew initials Maatz, died unexpectedly, only 57 years old. Um, the newspaper reported he had died of a heart attack and gave a brief description of his important role as the planner of the government buildings, including hospitals, government offices, and post offices and telephone exchanges. However, nothing was said about the connection between these and his death. The evidence of the possible connection, however, is buried in the National Archives in one of the hundreds of files left by the PWD before it was privatized. The only remnant of the hundred buildings they designed, according to the legend, all blueprints and sketches were thrown into the street. Among the thousand pages of bureaucratic correspondences, tiny budget approval forms, memos and contracts, in uh, one of the files, number 11826, um, dash 10, hides one letter of a different nature, very noticeable in its length. The author is Gadasher. The recipient is the director of the post ministry, Chaim ben Menachem. And the subject is delays in the constructions of telephone exchanges buildings. The date is January 64. Asher responds to the harsh accusation leveled against him by Ben Menachem in a previous letter according to which his architectural insistence on planning a unique exchange for each city leads to many delays and long queues for a telephone line. Therefore, Ben Menachem urged him to start duplicating buildings. Asher, who had a reserve German education, politely directed the blame back to the post ministry, while apologizing for doing so not to spoil the excellent relations between us. And then he asked to be excused from participating in a meeting on the subject. As you know, I'm in poor health after a heart attack. And in accordance with the strict instructions of the doctors, I must avoid any irritation or excitement, he writes. The degree of irritation in reading your letter and your claims brought me to a situation where I needed to get medical help. He died a year and two months later. Even if the evidence of the pressure exerted on him is abundant, and despite the fact that he himself links this pressure with his death, um, we cannot know for sure that the specific pressures surrounding one of many types of buildings that he designed led him to his death. However, the telephone exchanges um, do differ from the rest of them. First of all, they are generally similar inside. A machine room and several service sp spaces for electricity, cables, air conditioning, um, technicians' rooms, etc. Second, they were mainly intended for machines, which, unlike humans, have much more modest programmatic requirements, mainly a small number of windows, since the dust and light may damage them. And if we are talking about uh, repetitive infrastructure buildings, which apparently do not require a unique architectural articulation, why would they really look different from place to place? 
This tension existed in the architectural field since the Industrial Revolution, standardization, typisierung versus artistic expression, Kunstvollen. Um, and these days when the infrastructure of the fourth industrial revolution is only expanding, generic server farms and data centers, which do not often receive architectural attention, the telephone buildings, those who laid the path for the, rev for the revolution, pose an interesting case study. The answer is not purely architectural. That We got to say this, of course, um, but it also stems from the change in political, economic, and technological conditions. The transition from a welfare society in Israel to a liberal economy, from a governmental service to private companies, from human-operated machines to automatic ones, and from buildings in the city center to the outskirts. But it turns out that also on the image of one man. What made him insist on this? Well, one sketch, which is preserved in this small, really small collection, uh, deposited by his daughters in the Israel Museum. In fact, the only sketch that you can find there, which is also just a photocopy, uh, shed lights on this. The sketch, drawn quickly with low perspective, reminds in its language a much better known architect, Erich Mendelssohn, uh, who was also Gadasher employer for five years. Is it an evidence of a, is it an evidence of an influence? Is influence is mere stylistic? Mendelssohn and Asher have much in common. Both were born in Germany with a 20 years gap. Both two Jewish German bourgeois families. Mendelssohn's father was a merchant, Asher's an architect. Uh, both studied as a technician Hochschule to Berlin, Asher with Hans Pölzig, uh, Bruno Taut, and Paul Bonat. Uh, Mendelssohn completed his studies in München under Theodor Fischer, and both fled to Israel with the rise of the Nazis. However, while Mendelssohn was a distinguished architect by then, Asher was only 26 years old, a fresh graduate, uh, with short experience as an intern in the German Post and Telephone Office and two years in the office of his architect father. Um, together they designed this cooperative housing project in Neukölln, uh, which is still standing, it's in Zudende. And he also had a short experience as a stonemason. He, he did it between high school and university, a job that influenced him so much that he, did, he dedicated his thesis to the subject of stone masonry in ancient times. His integration in the office of someone who searched for the trans-temporal laws of local vernacular architecture, who was thrilled by the Judean desert and lived in this windmill, seems therefore quite natural. Among the projects that Asher worked on in the office were uh, the trade school in Tel Aviv, which is still a project in debate, I know, um, and the other one in Yagur. Villa Weizmann, there are Plenty of photos from the construction period in Asher's collection. Uh, the Daniel Wolf Laboratories in Rehovot, remember those beams. And the mandatory hospital in Haifa that we heard about before. Um, as well as the Anglo-Palestine Bank on Jaffa Street in Jerusalem. Uh, for the latter two, Mendelssohn praised Asher's full responsibility for their design from the initial sketch stages to the final work in drawings in the letter of recommendation that he gave him upon closing the office. Uh, Mr. Asher is an architect of mature practice and outstanding ability and experience. He was 31. I have much pleasure in recommending him as a first-class assistant. Mendelssohn closed his Jerusalem office in 1940 following a complete blockage of work due to the war, as the letter of recommendation says, and left Israel after his hopes of being appointed the chief architect of the British Mandate did not materialize. But the one who did integrate into the British Mandate Planning Department is Asher. It happened in an interesting time. It is customary to talk about the PWD through Austin St. Bob Harrison, that magnificent architect of monumental regionalism, as Ron Fuchs and uh, um, Gilbert Herbert said, whose public buildings, including the post office and the first telephone exchanges, uh, were used to demonstrate the power of the empire in scale, 
and to assimilate in the territory with stone coverings and even sometimes some oriental ornaments. However, when Asher arrived, Harrison has already left the country and the PWD began to do what they had never done before, duplicating buildings. This is reflected mainly in the mass construction of the Tigard Fortresses police station that were duplicated around the country with little changes in style but not in form. Asher himself was a member of the planning team and was personally responsible for several of, it, uh, several of them. Why then, when he was appointed chief architect with the departure of the British and the establishment of the state in 1948, did he change course and go against this PWD mindset? And not only there, this was also the mindset in Arya Sharon's state planning team, which advocated the duplication of housing units, and not just them, also schools, kindergartens, and health clinics across the country, due to large waves of immigration to the young country, a poor country, which entered an austerity regime. The answer to this, one must assume, is the education he received in Mendelssohn's office, who went against the same Arya Sharon and his partners in the Hug, as Alona and Nisan Shiftan wrote about, and the belief in the uh, uh, utilitarianism sorry, of the international style, which Mendelssohn regarded as destroying the essence of life, technology whose blind faith in it would cause the loss of the creative essence. Asher rejected any request for duplication from the very beginning. This is a short list from uh, about 140 buildings. Um, as early as 1951, in light of the need for the rapid construction of the telephone network, the post minister requested three types of building, small, medium, and large, according to the capacity of the lines, which will be scattered around the country. Instead, Asher designed dozens of unique buildings due to the importance he saw in them as part of the nation building project. They were the representative, uh, representative of the state in the civic center of the new cities, alongside the city hall and other institutions. This is another influence of Mendelssohn, which emphasized dearly the duty to a spiritual guidance of the public image of our cities. Asher even refused to allow the architects of those civic centers to design these buildings themselves, including Rechter and, um, and others. His approach was remarkably different from the British. He broke the monumentality into two separate human scale volumes for the post office and for the telephone, which received different spatial and material expression in each city. The landing of the two volumes on ground in Tel Aviv is not the same as the soaring in the northern city of Afula. The beton brut patterns in the new uh, desert city of Dimona is not the same as the stone-cladded building in Jerusalem. Um, this is the single sketch found in the National Archives and signed by Gadashel. And this is the current state of the building. Um, and even when the two functions were bound together, the buildings still differ from one, from one another. The same sketch that we've seen before um, was the, for was for the unique structure of the Haifa West building near the port and the railways 500 meters away from the Rambam Hospital, in which Asher emphasized the repeating H-beams in a way that m reminds a bit the labo la laboratory in, in, um, in Rehovot, uh, responding to the industrial environment around it. The stone walls at the entrance to the old village of Miron in the Galilee are quite different and which is nothing like the building in the heart of Hadera with its, mosha, its Moshava, which is a 19th century uh, rural settlement atmosphere. Um, this insistent undoubtedly contribute to the delays in the development of the telephone network and the pressure to duplicate never ceased. Only in two cases did Asher gave in. In, white, in one case, at Tirata Carmel, due to years-long delay caused by the post-ministry changes of building sites, um, he, he agreed to do this, but only with a building designed under similar conditions in nearby Zichon Yaakov. 
whether the conditions which led to the duplication of these structures in Tel Aviv are still unknown. In an interview, in a paper he wrote, the architect in the service of the government operates in a framework that creates a number of disabilities which bother him and in some cases even arouse mental resistance because they are unrealistic or outdated or have simply become routine in government offices. He wrote that article um, in the Architects and Engineers Organization magazine in an issue that focused on the works of the PWD. These things, as well as the entire issue, which seems to have been financed by the department, up until then there was not even a single page dedicated to the PWD in the journal, uh, lead to another point which also contributed to the insistence for architectural expression. The feeling of inferiority, inferiority sorry, of the PWD architects towards the private sector architects who took over the design of public buildings of other organizations such as the Histadrut or the local councils. They erected magnificent and very well-known buildings and their name is also very known. Indeed, despite the large number of buildings they designed, the name of Asher and his colleagues, a collective work of these clerks architects, remains unknown, hardly appear in the historiography of Israeli architecture. And in the same magazine, it was written at the beginning, at the editorial, PWD is a country unknown to most of our public. Let them know that they will be brought out of their anonymity, complimented for their achievements, and criticized for their failure. Six years later, in the next issue dedicated to the PWD and published after Asher's death, the deputy director of the PWD, Michael Golan, paid tribute to him, saying that he sacrificed most of his years in public service. His greatness, he wrote, was that he knew how to resist the temptation to erect luxurious public buildings, which will be monuments to his name as an architect. Um, he noted that Asher made sure his buildings combined functionality and aesthetics with a modesty which suits a small and not very wealthy country. Asher's su uh, su successor, sorry, Mordechai Shoshani, uh, changed this mindset and began duplicating buildings, which under the effects of the military spirit that swept Israel after 67, took on a fortress-like appearances, even if much more extravagant. Um, I don't know why the building has to be gray, he said, gray and boring, which will soon be covered with dust. Why don't we use beautiful, smiling and colorful materials? I think it will be very beautiful. So these are just two examples of duplications of the same building. Smiling or functional, the architectural attention given to the buildings when they were part of governmental service, using infrastructure building as shape in the everyday, taking us back to Mendelssohn and his influence, not stylistic, but spiritual. However, it seems quite outdated to the point of being even stylish in an era when the tech giants, um, which build, uh, they, they build the server farms that operate the cloud era, um, they build them in secluded places and only in rare cases they receive an architectural treatment that sees them as more than a warehouse. Both cases, server farms and telephone buildings, remain undifferentiated undifferentiated and rather anonymous, attracting attention only with the demolition, this example of the international one, or with the collapse of the internet network for a few hours and then we realize that there is an infrastructure for it. Just like the entire infrastructure, just like Gadasher, they are only noticed when they break. Thank you. And um, this will be part of the exhibition in the Israeli Pavilion, um, opening in May 20th. And I'll be happy and very honored to see all of you there. Uh, thanks.